Hello, I'm Kirsty Young, and this is a download from the Desert Island Discs archive. This edition may be slightly different from what was actually broadcast, but it is the only version we have. The recording didn't contain the guests' eight music choices, so we rebuilt the original show by using discs from the BBC Gramophone Library. For rights reasons, we've had to shorten the music. Full details can be found on the Castaways page on the Desert Island Discs website. The programme was originally broadcast in 1958. Desert Island Discs. Each week, a well-known person is asked the question, if you were to be cast away alone on a desert island, which eight gramophone records would you choose to have with you? Assuming, of course, that you also had a gramophone. As usual, the week's castaway is introduced by Roy Plumley. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? Our castaway this week possesses one of the most beautiful singing voices in the world. Her records have frequently preceded her to this island, records of opera, of leader and of operetta. It's with great pleasure that I welcome ashore Elizabeth Schwarzkopf. Madam Schwarzkopf, you spend most of your life travelling about the world. Have you had any experience of Desert Island? Oh, indeed I have had you an have? experience, yes. I had an emergency landing once from coming back from Australia in an island in the middle of the Pacific, and there was nothing but a coral reef, a hut, a landing way, a landing strip, and a stranded ship. Yes. How long were you there? Five hours. Oh, five hours. I'm yes. afraid this is going to be longer than that. Ah, but I will have records with me. Oh, yes. Do you have much time to play records in, in ordinary life? No, not really. You know, uh, when we are making those records, we listen to them so many times that once they are finished, we have no time ever to listen to them again. And that's oh, what I want to do when I'm on the desert yeah. island. Oh, with your husband and executive of Gramophone Record Company, there must be plenty of records in your home. Yeah, I should think there are. I think we have about uh, 10,000. 10,000. All <laughs> those riches and you can't play them. No. Oh, so what, what is your plan of campaign? That They're mostly your own records that you haven't really had a chance to rehear, is that? Oh, and of great artists which I haven't had the chance to hear and which I would like to hear really for the first time in my life. Mm. What's the first one you've chosen? Well, I'm afraid I will stick to my own records for once because I will like to relive my life surely as I have lived with very many wonderful artists and colleagues. And I would like to play you the record which has began my career outside of Vienna and it is the Brahms Requiem. On the strength of that record I was engaged to do, do the Brahms Requiem with uh, Fort Wengler in Lucerne mm. in 47. And also Toscanini heard that record and later told me quite a lot of things about it. And I had uh, one great friend in Toscanini through the Brahms Requiem. Yes, a very important record in your life. Yes, years. indeed. This was the first record I ever made with Herbert von Karajan, with whom I later was going to make very many more and very many opera performances in Milan, and also one of the many records I made with the Vienna Philharmonic. Mm. Now, to stay in Vienna, another record which you will recognize instantly, and which I think is something very lovable. It is made in London, by the way, but it is Vienna in spirit. Und verliebst du unser Mut, wie 
from Strauss's Wiener Blut. I recognized your voice. Who was the tenor? The tenor was Nikolai Gedein. Madame Strauss, let's go back to the beginning. Did you hear a lot of music as a child? Were your parents musical? Yes, very much so. You know, I started naturally with the piano like everybody else does when I was quite young. And I played the viola and I played the guitar, the organ and the organ services and... Uh, well, I even played the glockenspiel. Do you call that like <laughs> yes, that? glockenspiel. Yes. In, an, in a marching orchestra when I was at school. A marching <laughs> orchestra, that sounds like. <laughs> yes, fun. well, odd things one has done in one's life. Where were you born? I was born in the east of Germany, in a part which is now Polish, but I'm really German by birth, until I became an Austrian citizen, rather kind of honorary, honorable, how do you say that? Well, <laughs> honorary? Both, or hope. both, yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, what well, you studied in Berlin? Didn't you? I did study in Berlin. My real teacher was Maria Ivo Gün, whom I think everybody will remember yes. from her Zerbinetta, and she sang in London quite often. Mm -hmm. You did visit England at that time while you were oh, studying. Oh yes, I came to England first as a League of Nations student, and I was cycling through England, and I was uh, camping in England, and I remember some beautiful camping places. Yes. And then I was staying with a family in Leicester, where I really laid the ground for my English, uh, well, the command of the English language. I hope it is not too bad. <laughs> it's very good. And also, I think I laid the ground for my later marriage to an Englishman. You began studying as a good childhood, didn't you? Yes, I started that with a very famous leader singer of that time, Lula Müskmeiner. And of course, I wasn't a contralto, but I still remember her as a very great artist uh, when it comes to expression. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I heard really somebody with a fabulous command of expression. What was your very first professional engagement? Oh, I played at a funeral church service, and it was the viola I played then. <laughs> 20 marks for it, so that was marvelous. Bravo. And your first professional engagement as a singer? That was... At this point, after Elizabeth Schwarzkopf's first two music choices, our recording gives out, but it restarts in time for her final two records. All right, we'll have one of them out. Mm -hmm. um, you said when you first came to England, you did some camping out. Now, that might be useful. Oh, I'm sure it will, you know, because I know all about it, and I know all about cooking on a, on a campfire and so forth. It would be really, Good. really nice. What are you going to cook? Ha! <laughs> vital question. Well, I would have a French cookery book with me at all costs. But, oh. you know, I, nowadays I spend my life not reading French cookery books at all, but only books on dieting. And, uh, <laughs> well, you know, that's rather a vain hope. Yes. To, uh, have some yes, I don't think there. you'll be able to do very many elaborate French dishes on the island, so there's no reason why you shouldn't <laughs> have that cookery book. <laughs> Thank you. Are you only good at fishing? No, not at all, only for compliments. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, can you build somewhere to live? That's important. Well, you know, I have been, as I told you, tenting and camping in England. I still remember some very good camping places, and I, I think I'm quite a nature uh, girl, so yes, to speak. Yes. I can make do. Good. Good. Well, we'll leave that then and get back to music. What number seven? Hmm? Oh, well, nature, childhood, camping and so on brings me to something which I really like to play. It is this Hansel and Gretel, which was also uh, recorded here in uh, London. It was Herbert von Karajan conducting and we had all a wonderful time going back to childhood memories. Now, I want to play you the scene in the woods where the children are frightened, not by being alone on a desert island, but by being alone in a forest. Now we've come to your last record. Mm -hmm. What's that going to be? Well, it's the one record and the one opera I have been uh, trying to live up to all my life, and I had the great fortune to do it quite often now. 
It is the Rosen Cavalier by Strauss. Yes, this is the answer to the question I asked you early on, which is your favorite role? Indeed, it is the Marshalin in the Rosen Cavalier. And, you know, I had the great fortune in discussing it with Lotte Lehmann. And Lotte Lehmann, who, you know, has been the classic Marshalin, mm. has passed on to me quite a lot of knowledge about this and even has passed on to me something very dear to me now, a little Viennese bronze chimney sweep, which should bring me good luck for this role. Oh, nice. But you're not going to hear anything sung by Miss Schwarzkopf now. You're going to hear only the orchestra introduction, to hear my hundred children, which is the Philharmonia <laughs> Orchestra. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Herbert von Karajan and a very wonderful horn, Dennis Brain. <laughs> Are you one more choice to make, hmm? and that's your luxury. You said you were going to take a, a French cookery book. Well, that's all right. You've got that. Now you can choose something else as <laughs> yes, well. Yes, well, it, I'm afraid it will have to be some suntan oil, you know, because I once in my life, life hoped to have time to lie in the sun. That's what I eternally want. I'm looking for the sun all yes. my life. And, and you I never it. am allowed to sit or lie in the sun. Why? Well, when you have to sing a performance in the evening or a concert, you cannot lie in the sun for three hours. You will be all dried up and all parched. Oh, it's I didn't impossible. realize that. You must yes. take no chances with that voice of yours. No. We'll give you so... the biggest supply of sun oil <laughs> we you. can lay on. I'm afraid it's no good for cooking it, if you were hoping for that, oh, too. <laughs> no, <it won't. laughs> thank you. And thank you very much, Elizabeth Schwarzkopf, for letting us hear your choice of Desert Island Disc. Try to spend some more time with us in London in the future, will you? Oh, I'd love to. Goodbye, everyone. The guest in today's recorded program was Elizabeth Schwarzkopf, the interviewer Roy Plumley, and the producer Monica 